The injuries are, have been a concern. Um, as I've sort of said all along, you want to control what you can control. So we've had discussions in house about what we, what's in our power to control, whether it's load or volume or intensity uh, of our pre-season or or even our sort of in-week training between games. We've um, our. our load has probably increased marginally from last year, for instance, and you, you keep going back to comparison and history to be able to give you a basis for, for where you're working from. There's, but there's very little we can do about ACLs. Um, so we've got four now, which is not not great. But we've got like Brett McCaffrey and, and, um, and Andy Cracker, uh, Borley, and then now Lockie Key for the four guys that are Thick as thieves helping each other through the circumstance. I mean, it's bizarre. You don't spend a lot of time thinking about it because you you just start weeping. But um, the fact that four blokes have got the same injury and they're long termers, I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't rate it. You wouldn't have thought that you'd be in that position at the beginning of the year. But it is what it is, and and um, we deal with um, what we can control once again. And those boys are, are working diligently to to get themselves back in as, as quick a time and in as good a shape as they can. And that, uh, that example runs through the whole group. You know, it, it, um, whether they're playing or whether they're not, they set an example with the way that they're re rehabilitating, the way they're preparing themselves for their next opportunity, which is exactly what we want to do. Um, we want every individual to do throughout the group. And in a funny way, having those three or four weeks without the, the crash and bash of a, of a home and away season, um, could really have them in great stead come the second half of the year. So once again, I'll, I'll keep looking for, and we as an organisation keep looking for the positives out of out of every um, out of every circumstance, and and really feel that you know, the second half of the year provides us with an opportunity to uh, to start working towards our it's probably our squad of 26 that are going to 26, 28 that are going to contend through finals and and the second half of the year and, and you really want those guys to start playing some, some quality football together over a period of time and, and you know, we don't believe that we'll be injury free between now and, and the end of the year but we definitely would like to, uh, to, to believe that we'll have a better run than we had in the first half. The situation or the, the position we're in at the, in the season at the moment, the, um, you know, we've been able to, to go along and, and perform fairly consistently um, through the first half of the year and if you if, if we stay on that path then eventually you're going to have you know people talk you up um, as a premiership fancy finals contenders whatever whatever title they want to put on it but it doesn't change what you need to do day in day out to prepare for your, your chance to perform at the end of the year, so um, whilst there's, as I said, whilst there's that external perception of where you're at and what you're capable of, the focus comes straight back to what's immediately in front of you. It might be a weight session, it might be a recovery session. For the coaches, it might be an opposition analysis um, of, the, of the next opponent. Uh, it'd be Robert Harvey having a look at the, the stoppage structures of, of, um, of the next team we play. You know, Ben Hart and Matty Lappin looking at their respective divisions and making sure that we tinker with our game plan so that we're one or two percent better next week than we were last week. And I think there's still a little bit of white line fever in, in all of the, the coaches on our panel. You know, we've got a real fierce desire to succeed and to be a part of a successful environment. Um, and the focus sort of goes back to what we can impact and what we can control. and, and 95% of that, 99% of that is, is done through the week um, with our preparation on the opposition, um, coaching the strategies and the way that we want to play um, and then you hand it over to the players towards the end of the week and um, you know, 
as a collective group of coaches, we've been very impressed with how our players have taken that on board and and their um, their real effort and enthusiasm around executing those those strategies on match day, um, which is fundamentally what it's all about. We planned what we wanted to do mid-season. Um, probably started talking about it eight weeks ago and and you know, finalised it probably a month before uh, getting away. Um, we believe it's that it was the best um, the best step to review and recover, um, re-energise and, and then have ourselves focused to get back for the game against West Coast and uh, we're looking no further than that. We, we've, uh, we see them as, a, as obviously a legitimate top four team and a, and a team that's played some very good footy through the first half of the year and um, we're going to have our hands full so our entire focus now after rejuvenating sort of over the last week is to is to make sure we hit the hit the ground running and um, look after round 13. Welcome back to the club. A fascinating look at the year so far there with the coach Nathan Buckley. Now joining me live in the studio is a man who's been in scintillating form this year. He's really stepped up. Steel Sidebottom, welcome to the club. Thanks, mate. It's a pleasure to be on. Steel, life at Collingwood must be pretty good. Uh, Nathan Buckley looks like he's really settled into the coaching role well. Yeah, he has, and um, you know the you know two years prior to him being the head coach, he was assistant, and um, you know obviously I suppose he'd done his apprenticeship like they say, and um, you know I think he's been outstanding to to you know as you know date now, so yeah, good on him. And you can reveal to us uh, exclusively on the show that you're loving life so much that you've signed a two-year extension on your contract. Yes, yeah, so I have. Um, yeah, today I've. Uh, I suppose put pen to paper and um, yeah, I'll be a pie until the uh, end of 2014. So yeah, good news for me. Um, why did you decide to stay and uh, why did you decide to do it now to get the contract out of the way? Um, I think, you know, we've obviously got a, a pretty close, close knit at the club at the minute and I think, um, you know, I'll be mad to leave. And um, as you said, you know, why did I do it now? I didn't, I didn't really plan. I think it's just, you know, how it's really worked out. and. Um, yeah, I suppose now I'm just happy that it's, it's done and dusted. You've been in career best form. Were there any clubs that came knocking at your door looking for your signature? Um, not knocking at my door and I didn't hear too much from uh, my manager either, but uh, yeah, I was never intending to go anywhere, obviously. Can you tell us, is there anyone else at the club that you think might be close to signing? Um, yeah, well, with some more good news, uh, Bowie and Blair have both re-signed um, today as well for an extra two years. So. Um, yeah, it's great for them and um, yeah, obviously great for the club as well to you know, get as many people to sign as we can now. Moving forward to be successful, we obviously want to try and keep the group together. Is that something that you talk about as a group? Um, I don't think we, you know, we don't get together and talk about it, but you know, I think um, a lot of players play for success and um, you know, the guys have, um, you know, want to want to hang around with the group we've got because you know it's obviously some exciting times to come. So, you know, the more guys we can uh, get to sign on now, well then hopefully you know more success we can have. How important are players like Luke Ball and uh, and Jared Blair in the team, and, and how important is it for the rest of the team to know that they're staying? Um, I think it's massive, and uh, you know, to see that. You know them quality guys that are you know signing on. It can only help, and you know other guys see them sign on and think you know that the club can only go forward, and hopefully they can put pen to paper as well. You know pretty soon. You've just come back from your mid-season trip to Port Douglas. Uh, what were some of the things that you discussed on that trip um, in regards to the rest of the year? Um, we, you know we obviously went back over a bit of you know the first half of the season and reviewed it, and um, you know took some positives and you know what we need to work on as well but um, you know I think we've you know we've been going going not too bad and um, if we can take you know keep taking a few you know steps towards uh, um, I suppose up in, in that stance we you know we'll hold ourselves in good stead for the rest of the season. Well mate you look great standing there next to us uh, can you stick around till after the break? I can mate I'll be happy to. There you go ladies and gentlemen more of still <laughs> side bottom coming up after the break on the club. <laughs> 